You're listening to the Build to Rent Podcast. Build to Rent Podcast. Welcome to the Build for Rent Show, Build to Rent Show, building stuff and renting it. I get it wrong every time. Uh, you get the idea. We're, we're glad to be back. It's a cold, snowy December day here in, in Lehigh, Utah, and we've got another episode ready for you, and I'm happy to notice or to, to let everybody know, on the last episode, I was coughing up a lung. I think I, we tried to hide it, and Chase tried to talk over the top of it, but it was really loud. Uh, but I didn't have COVID or the flu or RSV, just one of those other things going around. Um, so we, we talked a lot about this weird market and what's happening and what's changing. Do you have anything new to add to that since we talked about it? I mean, we all talk to investors every day. What's, you know, what's, what's going on out there? I think the one thing that we could probably all talk about is rates have softened just a tad, right? One mm -hmm. or two points have come down a little bit. I don't know how much that's being talked about, but that's the update that we got from our lender last week. Yeah, and that's on um, conventional loans. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, they've, they've backed off. I mean, it, like on a one to four unit, no, two to four unit investment property. I mean, weren't we in the, in the dark, dark place of 10% there for one hot minute? I think it got um, by pretty close to it. Yeah. Ugh. That's... That's gross. <laughs> people were like convulsing and. <laughs> well, we have a lot of clients that are refinancing into permanent financing right now. And uh, yeah, that's a bad time to do that. Some of them were smart and locked, even though we don't recommend that too early, but some of them locked and then just paid extension fees. Yeah. Right. That I think ended up still saving them money. Versus. Yeah, it'd be fun to do the math on that. Not fun, but interesting to see if you paid thousands and thousands of extension fees versus just it. taking the rate, right? I mean, there's a there's a reason they're willing to offer those fees. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we're sitting here just assuming that the nice banker did us a favor. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, they're making money. They're making money. Yeah, yeah, follow the money. Yeah. Okay, so that's... Um, and what we heard last week, too, that if you're refinancing like a, a duplex or a fourplex or something like that, you could pay a couple of points and get into the high sixes right now. Who wants to take what paying points means? I'm sure a lot of the listeners know that, but we shouldn't assume. You're paying down your rate, meaning that you're going to pay some kind of a fee set up by the lender to help pay down that rate so that you have a lower interest rate. So they call it pay, buying down your rate. A point, point being a percentage of the loan balance. Loan value. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of people playing around with that. Um, and, and we'll get into cash flow here in just a second. But people that do build for rent projects have had to pull all kinds of rabbits out of the hat about we'll pay for your property management for a year. Uh, we've been throwing ideas about HOA dues being covered for a year because mathematically, if – if somebody wants to look at this as, okay, I was buying a million dollar property, right? And at the rate from early 2022 to where it is now, I'm going to have to pay $300,000 less <laughs> to get the same cash flow. Like I've literally had people say that to me and, and there were times where they're not wrong, but in what galaxy is that going to be possible, at least in that short a period of time, right? Well, the value of that property hasn't dropped. Again, we're using a million dollar property, right? Hasn't dropped 30% to take off. The Over a couple of months. Uh, exactly. So it's that the rates have gone through the roof. So let's just calm down a minute and not lower all of our comps, right? Just start fire selling stuff. So then it came up this idea yeah. And proceed. Yeah. Well, that that's funny that you say that though. People would people would argue, especially the pure commercial cuz we're in this hybrid world of you know, you use conventional financing, right? On a commercial loan, it's all debt coverage ratio, which I complained about a lot on the last episode and we did close that deal in Idaho. We did bring extra cash to get the stupid debt coverage ratio down. Um and we were willing to do that because we tried looking out in the pipeline of development and, and what's coming and when this is likely to hit the market. And frankly, we're just kind of not convinced that rates would be persistently that high 
for that long. That's a calculated risk we took. We might be wrong. But you say values haven't come down 30%. And, and I'm not agreeing. I'm not disagreeing. But I think there's pure commercial NOI cap rate investors that would say, yeah, they have. My, my debt costs that much, therefore it's come down. What do you think about that? No, I agree. But what I'm saying is it's because interest rates are so high right now because we're in this whole volatile state, right? And I, so I think if we give it a little bit of time and interest rates start to soften even more, like Chase had said, I mean, they've come down a little bit, but rates overall start to soften. I think we're doing ourselves a disservice by fire selling some of this stuff unless you have to. And I, I guess it's probably just my personal opinion because I look at some of, and again, not going commercial, just going with some of the stuff that we've sold as resells. We've dropped the price a little bit, but we haven't like done something where it's been like, some gouging price drop. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, my, you're, you're basically saying, I don't, I believe this rate situation is temporary. Uh, yes. And even if it's temporary for the next 18 months, I still think it's temporary. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that this is, these aren't what rates are going to be for the next five, 10 years. Well, if they are, I, I, I would argue that 30% is probably the best case scenario. Yes, I would agree. Right? I would agree. Yeah. But we've already seen rates start to come down a little bit, which tells me that, yeah, you know, we're in a, a better environment right now than I guess we were before. Well, there's a Fed meeting today. I mean, we're recording this in mid-December and the Fed meeting is happening today. Um this whole premise of we're, we're raising rates aggressively to combat inflation. What cracks me up about it is they've been raising them at like 75 basis points for the last, I, I don't know how many meetings. And every time they've done it, the market freaks out. Um, when talking to our lenders last week, it's almost like the mortgage markets are starting to shrug that off a little. They're kind of going, yeah, you raised them 75 bips. We don't care. Um, it's just not tracking as tightly as it used to, but we'll have to see because today the gossip is they're only going to raise at 50. And, and what cracks me up is they do this to break inflation. But every time like Jerome Powell blinks his left eye or blows his nose, somebody says, oh, he's not going to hike as aggressively. And the stock, stock market goes batshit, pardon me, crazy. <laughs> and then you go, I guess there's still inflation I mean, because there's all this money mm -hmm. apparently just waiting for lower rates. So you would probably say, doesn't that mean we got to keep going? I mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I've said this to you guys. I hear people say like, I've got a lot of dry powder. I'm just waiting to deploy it um, until the market is in the blood in the streets. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, and they yeah. say that like that's going to affect your real estate, but not mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be just fine when there's blood in the streets. It's like, that's the point, dude. They're raising them so that nine out of 10 people that are saying that can't buy when there's blood in the streets. And then you've broken inflation and a lot of other stuff too, unfortunately. Yeah. So let's go back to what you were saying, because we were talking about this specifically about a, a listing that you had, right? Where yeah. We were saying, hey, um, instead of taking this huge price cut, so, and, and this is probably where a lot of my feelings and thoughts are. Rather than reduce this price so that it's cash flow positive, what if we help offset that and cover HOA fees, yeah. you know, prepay some of the HOA fees, prepay property management fees, something of that extent. Be, and it's funny when you run the pro forma, when you look at the numbers, how some of that helps even out that cash flow a little bit. Because if you look at, you know, HOA fees, they're yeah. near $800 a month. Well, if you're... Yeah that's prepaid or, you know, a seller contribution, then your yeah. cash flow all of a sudden looks a little bit better, at least until we get into a time where mm -hmm. maybe rates are different. Thank you for keeping us on track. That's where I was going. And then I saw a squirrel. <laughs> we well, talked I, about I the squirrel for a while, too, so, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's true. That's what was the point is, um, there so much more is accomplished in $45,000 of credits to buy down interest rates, to waive management fees for a period of time, if you have that kind of relationship with your property manager, as well as your HOA or, or whatever. So much more is accomplished when you look at net operating income than a $300,000 price reduction, which is just, well, you, the builder can't do that. Yeah. And you could argue that, well, they're going to have to. Well, not yet. 
The builder can't, but either can a seller. most of the time the seller, right? Yeah. Because the one, the one property we were talking about specifically was an investor that owned it that was trying to yeah. do a resell. So yeah, they, I mean, some of them probably could if they were desperate, but again, do you really want to take that big of a hit? I don't know. It's just a question of how bad do things have to get before there's a rash of distressed sales. Yes. I think, right? Because look at some of these investors we've dealt with. They they go on the market and they, you know, you get in your head what the price is, which is not that anymore, and you're not getting any offers close to it. So what's your staying power? Right? What's I mean a lot of these people have mortgages in the fours uh or in the threes. Uh, so you could argue the staying power is pretty substantial, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to sell right now. I don't want to. Yeah. This is stupid. I'm not going to play this game. I'm not desperate. And if I did have another opportunity, maybe I can come up with funds somewhere else that I don't have to sell this specific yeah. property to get those funds. And isn't that what we're seeing? We're seeing most of the sellers just keeping their properties. They're well, the them. listings are down, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, they're we're inching. a couple of them that are wanting to sell. Yeah. Not a ton. Most Some of these people that... Do, do we dare say have to sell, really want to, but ultimately a 20% haircut, they have the power to say, nah, I'm not going to sell anymore. And yeah. some of them are in a position that, you know, they're needing to sell for whatever reason. I'm getting ready to list two fourplexes here in Utah. Um, and they're just because of their circumstance, but they're wanting to sell. And I, I just have to say, hey, this is what the market was at the beginning of 2022. This is what it is right now. But we don't even know that this is what it is right now. So we're going to test the waters and see. So I need you to be a little bit flexible with me, right? Mm -hmm. And just know, yeah. I don't know. There's no data out there because if I pull the data, it's going to tell me that it's a higher price. But we all know it's not a higher price yeah. right now. So I think just obviously being able to have those conversations. But yeah, most of the people aren't wanting to sell, especially with the rates that they have. Why would you want to get rid of that rate? It's hard to let go of that debt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got a call from an investor in the Bay Area recently what's the cap rate in utah and i said to him i don't know <laughs> and i don't know what it is yeah. i mean there's not enough trading but there's some a little bit of forced trading happening chase you and i just participated in um mm -hmm. it was a good sized transaction i mean and and the seller on this one just to give everybody color of who is selling right now um and, and maybe we can get to rents just in just a second because that might change things. The seller is a foreign national and without boring everybody too much, if they're going to sell their properties, they need to sell them all in the same calendar year as they're impacted by some FERPTA, uh, foreign investment uh, tax something, Real right? You're a foreign, tax, I can't yeah. remember the acronym, but they don't get their FERPTA withholding back from the IRS for like forever. And in addition, they... They are a, a international private equity fund, and they're diversifying out of direct holdings. So a direct holding is I or my LLC owns a property. That's a, a way to invest in real estate. Um, indirect is you bought shares in a REIT or you invested into a syndication. They're going from direct all the way to indirect, and that's just the fund's mandate. So they're selling. And luckily, even if they take a pretty big haircut on on listing these things, they're still way, way, way in the green. And to them, it doesn't matter. They made good money and they're out, right? Compare that to your buyer, your client. What was his motivation for buying? Well, he needed a tax write-off in the year. So he needed to spend a certain amount of money before the year end. So that was his motivation. But he also wanted something that made sense as well. And it was a, I mean, it was a respectable deal, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, it was a win-win for all parties. Well, I think as good as anything happening out there. Yeah. Better, probably, that because you know, it was a quantity deal, cash, quick close, but it's this cost seg stuff, cost segregation, mm -hmm. bonus depreciation. It's mid I keep saying it's mid-December 2022, but um the hundred percent bonus depreciation is gone here in a couple of weeks. Does it go to 80 after that? I think it drops to 80. Yeah. So there's a lot of people hurrying to buy and they know that, well. This deal may get better, but I'm going to save a ton of taxes if I get this thing on the books this year. Yeah. 1031 buyers, cost seg buyers, those are the ones buying right now. Yeah. I wonder if this interest rate movement, because it's it's like 
there's not a lot going on right now. I told you guys I'm, I've stopped caring for 2022 a few minutes ago. <laughs> but if that rate comes down, if Powell says, you know, half a point today, you know, people are starting to treat these, the deceleration of interest rate hikes as interest rate reductions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had a huge win today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's crazy. Well, we'll have to see as we go into 2023. I mean, it's rates. Rates are driving this. We had such low rates for so long. Do people begin to just accept a new normal of higher, persistently higher rates? Um, does that make the markets really dip to the point where that same buy is getting you the same net operating income? It'd be interesting to watch it. But I think some people are going to get a little antsy and anxious because I think they do have money sitting on the sidelines, yeah. right? So I think they're just waiting when's the right opportunity for me to jump in. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I we talked to Lane the other day and he said, hey, if rates can drop into the fives, it's game on again. And I think people would be okay with that. I mean, it, we're not going to see twos and threes again. So. Yeah. Well, there's like this investor hive mind. They all do it in, in, in packs. Like for, for the last couple of months, nobody's really been super interested unless it's been a screaming deal, which I would note the wholesale pre-construction stuff that we do, it's been working. Well, and I think that's why your seller, right? He's still making money off of it because yeah. he bought this wholesale. So to put color yeah. around that, he's still walking away with a chunk of money versus yeah. maybe somebody else that bought something at retail and is just trying to get out of it, you know, a year yeah. or two later. Yeah, that's that's tight. And just to update everybody on where the cap rate is, because maybe they're curious, we're in the we're in the high fives. We're probably probably about a five seven is where that deal ended, and then it cash flowed. It was cash flowing at probably at least five hundred dollars or more for the entire fourplex. So not crazy cash flow because of the rate that we're putting in at five and a half percent. I'm surprised you even got it to cash flow that much. But it was cash flowing. Well, and that's that's with keeping the HOAs in in the property management. We, we didn't have to yeah. be creative that way, like we're talking about. But it was still a cash flowing deal. But I mean, look at your purchase price compared to what we sold stuff for earlier this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, right. it was he got a hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollar discount, didn't he? Mm, yeah. Possibly more than that, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it softened from what they were in the spring purchase price. Yeah. But it was also a win for the seller as well. That's what it took to get the deal done. I would add though, didn't he have financing that the average Joe isn't going to have? He found a pretty good interest rate. Yeah. Because some, um, make it work without like telling everybody who he is. He uh, selling a company, the private equity group assisting him with the sale of the company offered some rental financing rates for him. To, to help him out that you're just not going to get elsewhere. Yeah. I mean, some of these, you, you've you seen some of these things happen too. If you've got 3 million bucks with JP Morgan Chase or Morgan Stanley or some investment bank, they're offering these margin loans that, that are pretty low, right? That, you know, against your stock portfolio, we'll give you a loan of $2 million at a 3% rate because they've got the, that thing just collateralized us all get out. Have you had anyone do that lately? Not lately, but my Bay Area contact, that's what a lot of her clients were doing. Yeah. And then she was they were doing interest only yeah. on those as well. So I'm putting a deal together right now, and this cap rate for this one is a 4.7. Four, and it's going to go? I, well, I oh, don't at know. The list at the, the list at 4.7. Yes, yes. Yeah. Huh. So... Well, it's it, you can make that argument of well, you know, if you don't cash know what the market's no, going to happen, just not, and that's not cash flow positive. Yeah, like and that that's paying cash. That if I put, yeah. if I throw your same interest rate, which again is really good and not, it's hard to get. Yeah, yeah. something that everyone can. Yeah, get, I'm still a couple hundred bucks negative cash flow. Huh. Okay. Well, we'll pick it up on the on the next one. That's some. Good observations about what's happening out there today. You guys have anything to add before we close this one down? Not that I can think of. Okay. Right nope. Well, everybody have a great new year and happy holidays and Merry Christmas. If we don't talk to you before then, we'll see you next time on the Build to Rent Show. Thanks for listening to the Build to Rent podcast. 
You are now just a few clicks away from joining our community of Build to Rent investors. All you have to do is follow our show on Facebook, LinkedIn, or wherever you're listening to this podcast. You can also watch this episode and more by subscribing to the Build to Rent podcast on YouTube. The information presented in this podcast is general in nature. Nothing in this presentation should be construed as financial advice or recommendations for any particular situation. The hosts are only licensed to provide advice and services in the states where they are specifically licensed. And listeners should seek the advice from an appropriately licensed professional in the area where they invest. The examples presented in this presentation are for illustration only, and no guarantee that similar results can be achieved, since the facts, circumstances, and participants are all different.